Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing the movie behind me. Okay, technically not the movie, the science in the movie behind me. The movie that just won the best picture at the 2023 Oscars. And the movie that if you haven't seen yet, you should probably watch. It's probably one of the best movies I've seen in a long time. With a lot of quirks, a lot of humor, but most importantly, quite a lot of really intriguing scientific concepts. The concepts that we've discussed previously in some of the videos in the description, but also the same concepts that resulted in the Physics Nobel Prize in 2022, the now-proven ideas behind quantum physics, and the experiments that solidified that quantum physics is an actual phenomenon that involves several major concepts, including things like superposition and entanglement. But by extension, to try to explain some of these concepts, it led to further propositions involving the idea of multiverse one of several explanations trying to understand how and why all of this works. And so in this video, I wanted to basically answer two questions. The first question is in regards to the movie. And without spoiling anything about the movie, the question is really simple. How scientific is this? Does this actually make any sense? With the other really important question being, do we have any physical proof that any of this is real? Or specifically, that the multiverse actually exists? that there are multiple universes out there with maybe multiple copies of all of us. Something that does exist in comic books and of course this movie, but something that might not exist scientifically. So let's discuss this in more detail. And no, you definitely don't have to watch this movie in order to understand what we're going to be talking about. And really the only thing I'm going to mention about the movie is that it kind of involves the idea of parallel universes or the idea of multiverse. And from the quantum physics perspective, all of this relates to the concept of superposition. Or in other words, something can actually exist in several different states at the same time until that something is observed at which point it collapses and assumes only one of the states. And this is of course where we have these famous experiments, such as the iconic double slit experiment, that essentially showed us that by observing something, it's possible to create completely different interference patterns. In essence, collapsing a variety of states into one single option. Or I guess the more famous example here is of course the iconic Schrodinger's cat. In this unusual thought experiment, Schrodinger actually argued for the absurdity of this particular idea. He suggested that if the cat is inside the box and there's some kind of a poison in there, it's impossible for the cat to be both alive and dead at the same time. In other words, he suggested that the ideas in quantum physics might have some other explanation. Yet today we know that, despite this sounding kind of strange, for our particles or objects obeying quantum physics, their properties do indeed assume superposition. They can have several properties all at once until an observation is made. At which point we refer to this as a collapse. They assume the property and become a classical particle. Although intriguingly enough, as I'm going to be discussing in another video, this property or these quantum properties technically can be applied to much larger objects, including objects that are much, much larger in size, possibly even a cat. Although in this case, I don't think the cat would survive these particular procedures, mostly because the conditions here have to be extremely cold, pretty much almost at the absolute zero. But all of the experiments in the last few decades pretty much prove this more or less correct. As in, they prove the ideas of superposition and entanglement, the principles from quantum physics. But even though these principles make sense mathematically and could also be applied to make a quantum computer, it's still not entirely clear what's the actual bigger picture here. Does any of this math actually imply that there are these multiple universes, or that we have these parallel universes existing simultaneously until something collapses them, determining an actual outcome? Well, here's what we know so far, and it's actually not that much. First of all, this is obviously not a new idea. The quantum physics explanation is relatively new, but the idea of having multiple Earths, or universes that restart over and over, is actually thousands of years old and was even proposed by ancient Greeks. But it wasn't until the 19th century debates that some of these ideas started to be discussed more scientifically. And the concept of multiverse has at least three main explanations all three coming from different branches of physics. One of them is from the string theory, which about 20 years ago tried to predict some of the observations from the universe, and as a result, the only explanation that made sense was the one where there were approximately 10 to the power of 500 universes in existence. 
Although today this particular explanation and the string theory itself is not actually as popular anymore because a lot of other observations from around the universe in the last 20 years simply could no longer be explained by the string theory, which instead of making string theory a solution to everything, created a lot more problems. The second pretty well known explanation for the multiverse comes from the physics of inflation. The concept that tries to explain how certain things in the universe manage to become so far away from one another. And the explanation here suggests that in the first fraction of a second when the universe just began, for some reason it suddenly expanded, increasing in size by a huge number, something like 10 to the power of 60. It's never really been explained why it did so, but the actual observations from around the universe, specifically from various really far away objects, do actually hint on the universe suddenly expanding to extremely large volume in a very short period of time. And so this idea of inflation today is one of the major explanations for some of the observations. But in inflation cosmology, there is no specific explanation for why exactly our universe even began. And so it's possible that during this inflationary period, a tiny part of space-time has gone through the Big Bang and basically formed the universe that we know. But in this idea, along the space-time, it's possible to have these other bubbles of universes, or pocket universes, that might have experienced something similar, together forming some kind of a multi-universe. Although in this case, none of them are connected to one another, and even the closest one would be ridiculously far away. Although it's also been suggested that if one of them expands far enough and starts to affect the other one, we might be able to see certain signs by looking at some of the oldest light in the universe. So far, nothing like this has been seen. And then the third concept, and that's the one that's been dealt with in the movie, is the concept involving the collapse of the wave function. And this is based on the concepts proposed by Hugh Everett back in 1957. Back then he referred to this as many worlds interpretation. And he was the first to propose it, but unfortunately was not taken seriously by anyone and ended up being extremely depressed because of this. So if only he could live until 2023, when the movie using his concepts actually ended up winning an Oscars. But in a nutshell, his ideas were really simple. Because there was no other way to explain what happens during the collapse of a wave function, he essentially assumed that when this measurement happens and when the wave function collapses, the universe literally splits in parallel versions, which then end up evolving on their own. And so for every single quantum particle that at some point ends up collapsing, you'll get a completely new universe. Definitely is the most exciting and the most intriguing explanation of all provided so far but also an explanation, just like the other ones, that unfortunately does not have any physical or scientific evidence. Or in other words, all of this is still very metaphysical, extremely philosophical, and makes a lot of fundamental problematic assumptions. For example, one major assumption here is that these waves are somehow real, that they somehow exist out there and are possibly even real objects. But nothing in quantum physics states so. The actual explanations are all mathematical, and the math here only provides probability. It does not tell us that these are physical objects and that these somehow exist out there in the universe. And there's definitely no proof or any observational data that any quantum physics concepts are physical in any way. In other words, the wave function is just that. It's a function. It's not a physical object that can be touched, that can be used, or that can collapse into something else. And so applying it to the rest of the universe might not be very scientific, especially because it cannot be proven or disproven. But more importantly, except for the few experiments that do involve wave functions that do exhibit quantum effects on smaller scale, when it comes to seeing any other effects, such as the multiverse, there is absolutely no evidence anywhere. Even though there were suggestions of that evidence before. And here is probably one that kind of made rounds a few years ago, and I believe I've discussed it on a channel as well. This was in regards to the observations of one phenomenon in outer space, known as the cold spot, an unusually large imprint visible in a cosmic microwave background that appeared somewhat unusual when it was originally discovered. And approximately five to six years ago, someone actually tried to propose this as an explanation for potential evidence for maybe multiverse. Essentially, another universe out there, pushing on the universe that we live in, most likely as a result of expansion, with the interaction between these two universes, resulting in an unusually cold spot visible in the CMB. And so this right here provided this unusual evidence. 
the only piece of evidence ever for maybe the existence of another universe somewhere out there. But here's the thing, this was very controversial back then, it's actually still very controversial, and not a lot of scientists agreed with this, for a very simple reason. There was a much better explanation involving what we know about the universe already. This was probably a location of a very large supervoid, it's known as Eridanus supervoid, and we've discussed this in one of the videos in the description. A supervoid would explain this much better, would not involve any multiverses, and actual physical evidence for the existence of this supervoid was later discovered using some of the more advanced observations. So unfortunately, this was not the evidence for the multiverse either. Today it's believed that the original proposition was only made because the early observations were not as detailed as the ones created by the Planck telescope years later. And so, unfortunately, no physical observation. So does that mean that multiverse probably does not exist? Well, there is another explanation, and it's not really observational or physical, it's more or less statistical, and it's something that we actually cannot explain today. And here the idea is once again kind of simple to understand. Our universe seems to contain a lot of physical constants, and some of these constants, like for example the fine structure constant, have to be extremely precise for things to work the way they work in the entire universe. Changing just a tiny number inside these constants would actually shut down everything. For example, for the fine structure constant, a small change would result in no nuclear fusion, no stars, no supernova, and no elements created anywhere. Yet somehow all of these constants are perfectly calibrated, with a lot of other physical ideas in the universe creating just the perfect condition for things like stars, planets, and of course us to form. And so the statistical explanation for the multiverse would be, well, it's quite possible that there are indeed infinite number of a lot of other universes where the constants are different, and in those universes things just didn't really work out well. Yet here we are living in the perfect universe with just the right constants and just the right mixture of everything else and of course other physical laws that allowed for life to form and allowed the intelligence to form to then contemplate and discover all of these unusual effects. But once again, not a particularly satisfactory explanation, and not an explanation that we can either prove or disprove once again. And that's unfortunate, because it just means that the multiverse as a concept is still very very metaphysical and not scientific at all. There's really no way to find any evidence or to prove this, at least based on any modern observations. And the idea of collapse coming from the quantum physics does not actually provide any way for us to understand what goes on with various particles right before they collapse, or as they maintain their wave function. But chances are, some of the answers might be provided in the future, as the scientists conduct more experiments using very large objects that actually can become quantum in some way, and we'll discuss some of this in another video that's going to be on the channel really soon. So do check out the link in the description that might have that video there already. And so, well, to summarize, great movie, definitely deserving of the Oscars, and it's definitely one of those movies I'll be coming back and watching over and over because it was just kind of fun. But scientifically speaking, it is based on a somewhat metaphysical interpretation of the idea of superposition and the collapse of the wave function. We actually have no idea if the multiverse is a real thing and if there are other yous and me's out there. But honestly, for me personally, someone who's not particularly religious, even though I tried a long time ago, and for someone that's experienced quite a lot of unfortunate tragedy in my life in the last decade, this interpretation is the one that makes sense. Because I truly want to believe that somewhere out there, somewhere in another universe, both my mom and my youngest son Neil are still alive, still chilling, playing together, doing all kinds of grandma and son things, and we're all kind of happy. And so I guess it's more of a faith thing. And it's also kind of a way for me to cope with a lot of this without having an actual religion. But other than that, that's unfortunately all we know. And by the way, if like me you're obsessed with these concepts, and if you've also enjoyed the movie that I mentioned, you absolutely have to check out this TV show as well. This is by far one of the most mind-blowing and one of the most interesting TV shows I've seen on the quantum ideas pretty much ever. Definitely worth your time and will definitely make you question your reality. But on that note, Congratulations to all of these wonderful people for winning so many Oscars this year, and hopefully, maybe, in the next few decades, we'll find out more about this idea of multiverse and if it's actually real or not. At the moment though, well, nobody knows. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, 
come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining Jenna membership or by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.